Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to solve a problem for the shortest job first. So let's say that we have a question that says using the SJF method uh, in the operating system, which is shortest job first, compute the completion times of these jobs and also the average turnaround time and average waiting time. So let's say we have these processes, which is, you can call it a process or a job, A, B, and C, and D, okay? And then the arrival time for each of the job is zero, second, two seconds, third. So this, this job arrives at third second, this job arrives at fifth second. And then each of these processes or jobs have a burst time or run time, which means when this job comes at the zeroth second, it's gonna take three seconds uh, for, to complete. That's why either the run or the burst time is three. Similarly, the B, let's say it arrives on at two seconds, the burst time for this job is four seconds. Similarly for the C and D. What we need to calculate is the completion time, turnaround time, waiting time, and run time. Okay, now in order for us to calculate that, the first thing we're gonna do is basically create a Gantt chart. So Gantt chart. All right, and then, so in the Gantt chart, let's create like so, we are going to follow the process which is criteria. Criteria is the burst time and the mode is non-preemptive. Burst time means that we are going to pick up the job that takes the smallest amount of time to execute and mode will be non-preemptive with me which means that we'll allow it to fully complete before we pick up the next job that is the meaning of non-preemptive the preemptive is the opposite of that so execute the process until it's complete non-stop okay so let's continue so we're going to create a gantt chart for this uh, so at the zero seconds we'll put zero time over here okay so at zero second how many job have arrived so I can see that at 0 second job A has arrived but no other jobs have arrived because B arrives at 2 seconds, C arrives at 3rd second and D arrives at 5th second which means there is only one job, there is no competition. If there was any other job that would have arrived at 0 second, let's say C was 0 then we would have to choose between these two and that's when we will use the burst time uh, uh, you know, criteria. But because there are no others, uh, this basically takes precedence. Uh, this basically is going to be uh, executed okay so job a will be executed and how long the job will be executed is going to be executed for three seconds so i'm going to put three over here and like so so this a job is going to run for three seconds so we can check mark that so a job is done okay now at the two second at uh, the second second so after these third second is complete once this is complete uh, has any other job arrived so at the third second at the third second has any other job arrived yes it has which is b which is b so we have b waiting in the queue so at the second second so the, let's say this was this was second second uh, don't create all of these arrows this is just for your understanding okay don't put this second over here as well just for your understanding so at the second second, uh, B had already arrived, which means because the B had already arrived, uh, has anything else arrived at the third second? So yeah, at the third second, we have two jobs waiting in the queue, B and C. So at the second, we had B and at the, on the third, we have C. So at the third second, which is after this job A gets complete, we have two jobs waiting in the queue, B and C, because at third second, both have arrived. Now we have to choose between which one we want to get, which one will be executed. So the criteria is the burst time, right? So we spoke about that burst time or the run time. So we need to know which out of the two takes less time to execute. So what do you think? Out of B and C, which one is taking less time to execute? B takes four seconds, C takes three seconds. So as you can see that C takes less amount of time. That's why we are going to give C a precedence and we're going to put C over here. So how long does it execute? So it's going to execute for three seconds. So at that point, we were at the third second. 
and it's going to get executed for another three seconds which means in total is three plus three which is six seconds so i'm going to put that there okay so three seconds three plus three is six seconds now again at this six second i uh, have are there any other job which have arrived so b i'm going to check mark b is done so at the six second let's see uh yes at the six second we have d because at the fifth second d had arrived so we have two jobs waiting in the queue c and d because c was already waiting in the queue sorry uh no 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 not yeah we're done with c right so it's b yeah so b and d so b and d are waiting in the queue because b had arrived but we couldn't execute it because it was taking longer according to the criteria so b is waiting in the queue and d is waiting in the queue so waiting in queue is b and d now out of these b and d which one do you think has less time of execution as you can see b takes less time right so that's why b gets the precedence so that's why we're going to put b over here and how long does it take to execute so four seconds so six plus four is ten so it's going to go up until ten seconds okay after that so b is done b is cleared the last one left is d so we're going to put d there and how does how long does it take it takes seven seconds so 10 plus 7 is 17. So i'm going to put 17 over here okay so that's how you have created the gantt chart and uh, you have decided which are the jobs that are going to be executed at what point and you know um, at, at what time they're going to be executed and in what order they're going to get executed now we need to uh, calculate the completion time so the completion time is actually completion time ct equals so we have to calculate the completion time so what time do you think job a got completed got completed third second so i'm going to put three there okay what time did b get completed so b got completed at 10 seconds so i'm going to put 10 there yeah 10 there okay what time did c get completed c got completed at the sixth second right so I'm going to put 6 over there. What time did D get complete? D get complete, got completed at 17 seconds. I'm going to put that there. Okay. So that's your uh, completion time. Now the turnaround time, TAT, equals completion time minus arrival time. Okay. So that's how the TAT is uh, calculated. The turnaround time. So this is going to be CT, which is this minus at so let's do that so 3 minus 0 is 3 10 minus 2 is 8 6 minus 3 is 3 17 minus 5 is 12 okay so that's your turnaround time uh, next up is the let's see let's see we have the waiting time right so how is waiting time calculated so waiting time is calculated in will be turnaround time TAT minus the burst time so turnaround time which is this one and burst time which is this one okay so this minus this so let's see 3 minus 3 0 8 minus 4 4 3 minus 3 0 12 minus 7 5 okay so we got our waiting time the last one would be the run time okay so runtime is basically the time at which CPU gets first, which means uh, at what time the job was allocated a CPU the first time. So as you can see for A, it got allocated at 0 second. So that's why A will be 0. Then for B, it got first allocated, uh, it got the CPU allocated the first time at 6 second. So put 6 there. For C, it got at 3 and for d it was 10 so that's that usually they don't ask you about the runtime uh, in case of non preemptive mode because it's continuous but uh, just in case if it is asked in the examination you know how to calculate that the next thing we want to calculate is the average turnaround time so average tat 
okay so what is average tl how do you calculate average average is basically the sum divided by the count so in this case average turnaround time would be 3 plus 8 plus 3 plus 12 so 3 plus 8 plus 3 plus 12 and how many items 1 2 3 4 so that's going to be four items so how much is this uh, so that's 11 plus 3 is 14 14 plus 12 is 26 so 26 divided by 4 4 6 at 24 So that's going to be 6.5. So that's your average turnaround time. Next thing we want is the average waiting time. So average waiting time is equal to sum of waiting time divided by count of jobs or processes. So what is the sum? Let's see. So waiting time is 0 plus 4 plus 0 plus 5. That's nine right so zero plus four plus zero plus five that's nine divided by four the average is four to the eight two point five so that's your average waiting time okay brilliant so i hope this was pretty clear to you uh, how does the uh, stf job first shortest first job method works and I hope uh, the Gantt chart and everything, the calculation is all clear to you. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video. And all the best for your assignment for postgraduate diploma in computer application for operating system. Take care. Bye-bye.